OVB
morning. We are grateful to the Almighty God that we've gathered in His presence today, March 11th, 2023. It's been three years that we came here. When I, said, uh, when I say we came here, Faith Fellowship, three years ago we were here to bury our brother, Jeffrey Mensah. It's very sad, very sad that we have to depart. Part ways with our brother Yaukisi. But all that we can say is, to God be the glory. My name is Marian Mensa Ajman. On behalf of Pastor Stephen Aite and Lady Monica Aite and the entire family of both Juliana Inti and Yaukisi, I welcome you all to the burial service of our brother, husband, uncle, and father, the late Yao Kisi. One of the verses says, will your uncle hold in the storms of life? The question that all of us should ask ourselves, will our uncle hold in the storms? of life in storms like these how are things going to hold for us we're going to go by the program in order to compress the time please call to worship is by minister runs for the poem. after that there'll be an opening prayer by pastor monica aite and then it will be followed by the hymn when peace like a river and then followed by Mrs. Sandra Opon's first scripture reading, the Ransford Opon. Thank you. Thank you all for being here this morning. Our call to worship is from the book of Romans chapter 12, the verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Uh, we've gathered here this morning, like my sister said, to mourn with the bereaved family. Um, that is what the Bible admonishes us to do, and that's exactly what we are here for. The other day, Jesus said that if you do unto these little ones, you've done it unto me. And the Bible also goes on to say that we can do everything, we can prophesy, we can pray, but if we do not show love, then all that we are doing is in vain. That has already welcomed you all. So thank you for being here this morning. Father of the fatherless, husband to the widow, we come to you this morning in sorrow and in trust. We thank you for bringing us together to mourn with those who mourn this morning. In sorrow, in joy, Father, all the glory belongs to you. We pray for those on the way coming. We pray that even as we say goodbye to your son, you will strengthen us. You will give us the words that we need. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> 
Thessalonians chapter 44 verse 13 to 18 and now dear brothers and sisters we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope I believe that when Jesus returns God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living, when the Lord returns, will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So, encourage each other. Amen. 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 We're going to do some hymns together. Oh, my God. 
school after completion of his primary education he moved to Accra Ghana to establish business ventures in both Accra and Ghana. He seemed migrated to the USA to pursue the dream of his life. He leaves behind his loving wife Juliana Iti in the USA, five children in Ghana and USA, 18 siblings in both Ghana and USA, relatives and friends in Ghana, USA and other nations, a loving husband, great father and grandfather, a caring and compassionate brother, a good friend, and above all, a devout member of Christo Asafo Mission, Ghana, and USA. Ejayao will dearly be missed by anyone who knew him. May his soul rest in peace. <coughs> Thank you all for your support and your encouraging words that have helped us in this difficult time. Last Saturday was my 18th birthday. Ah, 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 ah,
My dad was a caring father. He always wanted the best of us and the people he knew. He was a selfless individual who would sacrifice his time and energy for others' well-being. He will be missed by all who knew him. My dad was my best friend. We used to tell each other buddies because that was <laughs> now my buddy is at rest. But he is watching not only over me, but also my siblings and those he loved, cared, and kept close to his heart. I miss and love my dad. Dad, I know you are listening to this. Till we meet again, may your soul rest in peace. Each other calling each other calling each other until I fell sick last year for almost seven months he kept calling me and said I saw the bay and I'm in my show I saw why are you the bay and I'm in my show I saw yami ya dungi di bunyi ya Nyamia 
Adunia di Bronya, we are so rubbish. Shame me. Can't be shoe. It's a good one. If I miss it, what's it? What's it? What I want, sorry. I saw international you. I saw international woman, my back. Me <laughs> As you can say, you may be show cook and new. Could be a good catch of say, Jai school, a baby will be a fellow good school. That was it, cock and new. Eja, we mow them with a bee. We mow them with a bee. We mow them with a bee. International say, Eh, I'm in a pa. You be sure. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Can we once again call on Linda Chematin to give the tribute for the family? Afterwards, it will be followed by Michael Apia to give the tribute for Juliana Inti. Then it will be followed by the hymn, Abide With Me. Please let us all welcome Linda Chematin. Thank you. We have gathered here today to celebrate the life of our brother Yao Kisi. His life was a gift to us and his passing has brought us immeasurable pain. Yao was born in Bipon in 1960 to the late Kwabina Kisi and the late Ama Frim Poma. He's, he's survived by his wife Juliana in T, his five children, 18 siblings and other relatives. He was highly family oriented and took pleasure in seeing everyone unified. A person that was of high character, with a calm and cool demeanor, despite life's challenges. He will be remembered in our hearts as an amazing husband, great father and grandfather, loving brother, and a generous uncle with a shining personality. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you. This on behalf of my mama. I would like to first give thanks to God for his strength and comfort in this difficult period. I would also like to thank you all for your support in various ways. May the Lord richly bless you. I met Ajaya Kisi over 20 years ago here in Musta. We fell in love and had a handsome son together. I was in Ghana when my son called me that his dad was still sleeping when he was supposed to get ready for work. I asked Kofi to call 911, and when the paramedics arrived, they told us a word that we were not prepared to hear. Ajaya, as I affectionately called him, was a good husband, a caring father, a great brother to his siblings and relatives, a great friend, a devout member of Crystal Asafu Mission, Ghana and USA. <laughs> a job, my love, my friend, and my all. You have left a void in my life. My heart still aches with sadness, and secret tears still flows in my eyes when I think of you. You have left us so soon. Ejaya, you will forever be my love. Till we meet again, may your soul rest in peace. <laughs>
with a widow and with a grieving family and to show your love for Wafayao Kisi. And I just want to say that God bless you. Amen. Before I proceed, I also would like to say that every word we have heard, from the songs that have been sung, from the words that have been said, speak volumes about the man. And I want to speak for a minute about perspective. Because we've had different accents, from the English accent to the American accent to the local African accent. And it tells you that we are all victims of whatever has molded us culturally or where we come from. But we are people who Paul says are not without hope. And we are confident of one thing, that a day comes when on a beautiful celestial shore we shall gather again at the foot of the Lord. And so Paul tells us that we don't mourn like those who don't have a tomorrow, for we are confident in one thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen and amen. amen. I want to acknowledge Pastor Vasco who is here with us and will help me uh, to pray for the family when I'm done speaking for a few minutes. 
1873, a gentleman in the city of Chicago, the wealthiest lawyer in all of Chicago, Horatio Spafford, a strong member of the Presbyterian Church, and a staunch supporter of evangelist D.Y. Moody, D.L. Moody, sent his wife and four daughters across the Atlantic to support a man of God in a crusade. He received, within a short time, three weeks later, a telex saying that the ship went down. Your wife survived, but your four daughters died. In the pain of his loss, he had news that fire broke out in Chicago and a man who owned half of the real estate in Chicago at the time lost all his property. In his pain, in the sorrow and the agony of his soul, he began to write, When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about perspective. There is a season or a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. There is a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Father, take the seed of this word, multiply grace upon it, and bring glory to your son Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to say to you this beautiful morning that you came out of eternity, and you will return to eternity. Your time here is brief. Bible says 70 years. If you are lucky, you earn a few more. Everything after 70. As a matter of fact, the greatest man who ever lived only had 33 years. But you have enough time to make an impact and leave a legacy. So that when you two exit this world, people will gather. Not to shed tears or to say things that they don't mean. But truly to express love for you because of what you meant to them. The tears you are hearing this morning speaks volumes about the man, Ejaya who lies here. The Bible tells me then that you shall return to eternity. So how you live your life on this earth, this earth of trouble and affliction and confusion. The Bible says God created a certainty of land out of water. And Psalm 24 verse 1 and 2, the Bible said God has established this earth upon water. The meaning of it is that this earth is completely uncertain. Nobody knows tomorrow. Nobody knows the day they were born and nobody can tell the day they will die. You can accurately predict when you will exit. My question to you is, how are you investing in your purpose in this world? Hebrews 9, 27, the Bible says, It is appointed unto all men, once to die, and thereafter judgment. An appointment that is certain for everybody. <laughs> Two things are certain in life, taxes and death. Everybody, me, you, all of us, will die. In fact, the day we are born, we start dying. Can I announce to you that everybody here, you are dying. Every day you live, you are dying. You know, um, I've come to an age where I wake up in the morning with more things than I went to bed. And it tells me that I am dying. That life is leaving me slowly. How you live is what matters. The Bible tells us then that we are lucky or blessed to have a redeemer. His name is Jesus. The Bible says that this Jesus, he calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So your 70 years is contained in him. And if you find yourself in him and are anchored to him, Beloved, there is no storm, no crisis, nothing that will happen that will shake you because you are confident in a world of uncertainty who you are in Christ Jesus. The whole world wants to predict tomorrow, but we can't. Doctors want to tell you how well you'll be tomorrow. Engineers want to tell you how long a bridge will last. 
In fact, um, the, you know, CNN is trying to tell you what will happen tomorrow. Your, your bankers are trying to predict whether you can repay the loan, so they ask you to bring financial projections. As a matter of fact, even in the church, we want to know tomorrow, so we love prophets. Everybody wants to know tomorrow. But can I submit to you that it is more important to know the one who holds tomorrow. See, the first thing that God created in this world was time. The Bible says in the beginning when there was confusion, God set boundaries to time and said, let there be light, let there be darkness, and time was set. Everybody that lives upon the planet who are governed by time. If you maximize your time, the Bible says, and make use of it, then you will see the goodness of God. Every morning you will wake up to chances, challenges, opportunities to effect change, choices that will build your character. And Shakespeare agrees that all men are actors. Ofa Yaokisi was an actor. In one life he was a father. In another life he was a husband. Another place he was a worker. Another place he was a friend. Another place he was a brother. Another place he was a son. Each part of your life must indeed fulfill purpose. And technology today. What am I saying to you? When the Bible tells us in the beginning that God is everywhere, it was hard to grasp the revelation that God could be everywhere. Until today, I can sit in Worcester, do a live on Instagram, and have people in Australia be on the program. So technology tells us right now that the reality that God is everywhere is true. I can sit in Worcester and pray for somebody and see an effect in far-flung places in the world. Beloved, when the Bible says in Luke 16 that Lazarus died, and the rich man died. Both were assigned to death, and yet they could see each other. Whilst it was a myth some time ago, today is practical reality. Because you can be far from me, but I can. If technology can make us see each other, then that reality in the scripture is true. But a time will come in eternity where those in hell will see those in heaven, and those in heaven will see those in hell. But you cannot cross the chasm. If I gave you a chance and said, would you rather in your pension years live in a beautiful mansion in Hawaii or spend your pension in a coal mine in Siberia struggling in pain, what would your choice be? You came from eternity. You are going back to eternity. Will your 70 years here destroy your chance of going back to eternity? We serve a man who is a redeemer. His name is Jesus. Pastor, here is a man who the day he was born, he knew his only assignment was to die. The difference. Wafayao has crossed over. A time and a day will come when we will see him. Where will you be when you see him? It will be too late. You were a spirit, housed in a body, and has a soul that must help you decide where you will spend eternity. I urge you with every fiber of being on the inside of me, choose well, decide well. Let me finish by mentioning something to you. The Bible talks about a concept called theodicy. And Bible scholars say that theodicy is the comprehension or the study or the lack of understanding. It is a question that you will never answer until we arrive in eternity. The Bible says there was a man called Job. In fact, God was so pleased with him that he was the wealthiest man who ever lived. And his book is actually the oldest book in scripture. But the Bible said Job went through so much that he wondered whether there was only purpose to life. But in Job 19.25, Job made a statement that made a difference in his life. When everything else was dark around him, Job said, I know, I mean, no. Kofi, no. He said, I know, come to knowledge, that my Redeemer lives. And because he lives, he will stand on this ground one day, and this mortal body that is perfect,
imperishable will have life and immortality will come to my mortality and I will be able to testify of the goodness of my God. The angels said to them when they gathered, this Jesus you see going will come back the same way. A man lived his life aright and God caused his own spirit, the spirit of the word, to permanently covenant with the man's body in eternity. And Ejaya has joined them. And anybody who has had a past death experience will tell you that when you see the glory of the cloud of witnesses, you don't want to come to the darkness <coughs> of this earth. A gentleman I went to school with in Ghana many years ago, ran a nightclub in California, was doing big things, enjoying his life. And then one day, he suffered a heart attack. They rushed him, he had moved to Maryland. They rushed him from where he was and rushed him to a hospital, Johns Hopkins. They took him by a helicopter and they declared that there is no hope for him, he's gone. And the doctor said, take the life support machine off him because this guy is dead. You can Google him. He went to school in like small like name Julia Sotomi. This is not a testimony from somebody I don't know. He said in his testimony that I was caught up in the clouds and I was my body was drifting. I saw my family weeping and I was going. He didn't speak, but whatever he was communicating came out of his spirit and entered into me. And I knew he was telling me, go back to your body. He said, I returned. The man who now once ran a nightclub in California now goes around the world speaking about his experience and telling people, Jesus is real. Amen. Nobody could understand what had happened to me. And when I tell people my experience, even I who saw it all, when I tell some of my best friends, they laugh and say, Police Kupana, are you, is this in a myth or something they're telling us? It is sad. We will share the word. We will speak the word. The power of the choice is up to you. I pray and I hope that you will choose Jesus. You will choose life. And one day where Ijayao is, all of us will gather there. Let me leave you with the scripture that affirms to us that death no longer has power over the one who knows Jesus. Paul says in Romans 8, 35 to 39, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, or anything else in creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Perspective. Perspective. When we don't know where we are going, we see signs like water shock. But when we are confident of where we are going, we look and declare glorious home call. Because we are confident of one thing, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Like Job, I want to remind you of the greatest love of all through Christ Jesus that gives you hope. And I want to say to you that leave here today with a blessed assurance. I know you will miss a Jaya and I will miss him. He was a very determined man. I met, I met him when he called my phone. I hadn't met him before. And at the time he was going through a little crisis with his precious wife. And he said, I want my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no pressure that comes on a man. That when people expect you to deliver as a pastor i've discovered that you're a teacher you're a mechanic you're a lawyer you're a financial consultant you are a car repairer a pastor must know everything everybody by god's grace 
they came back together. And I believe that God had a purpose in it all. Listen to me, dear one. You too can have an ending that is beautiful. You too can have an ending that even though you are weeping, a part of you rejoices because you have qualified to go into a better place. I pray to God that your testimony will be like that which has been said in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. That we don't want to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who are falling asleep in him. Our brother is sleeping. <clears throat> Jesus was told that Lazarus had died. And what did he say? Lazarus sleeps. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have hope? Do you believe that one day we'll gather again? Yes. Then please understand. Keep your eyes on the one who paid the price. The one who made a difference. And walk in that confidence that this passing away, it is not the end. It is a transition to a better place where nobody will call you about credit card or taxes. <laughs> and nobody will disturb your peace of mind. Where no family contentions or evil can be for you, but the glory of God forever will remain with you. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us by his grace, give us eternal encouragement and hope. May he encourage your heart and strengthen you in every good deed and in every word. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 to 17. Mami Julie, Kofi, the rest of the family, our sister who read the tributes, I want to talk to you one more time and tell you, be comforted. Be comforted in the Lord. Onyame, ekamu hubibri. Pastor Vasco and I will pray for you, but I invite my brother Ransford to come because that guy is anointed and can sing. There's a song in my spirit, and if I raise my voice to sing, maybe you'll stop crying and start laughing. So I invite him to help me. Yeah. Wonderful. We are in the spirit.
We thank God for this hour. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 27 that it is appointed unto man once. We all have doctor's appointments. We have dentist appointments of which we mark notes. We set alarm clocks to remind us. My question to you this morning is, have you set alarm clock on this appointment day? I met Ophaya Friday. He came to the store, we spoke about business. Sunday morning when I was about to go to church, I heard that he has passed away. Was he aware of this appointment time? Beloved, gradually, gradually, we are going to meet our Lord. Before I pray for this bereaved family, I want you to mark this on your calendar, that tomorrow it could be you. Tonight it could be me. Are we prepared? As Pastor Steve rightly said, to leave is for Christ, but to die is gain. Let us pray. Our God and everlasting Father, we honor you and we bless you at this moment. For your word says that in every situation, we also give you thanks. Father, you brought us to this place because you have called him to your glory. Your word declares that you are father of the fathers. You are a husband to the widow. And you will protect those who do not. In Thessalonians chapter number 3, verse 3, that you are faithful. That you will protect us from every evil and establish us. Therefore, I pray this hour that you will establish this family one more time. So, you protect them from sickness. You protect them from poverty. Father, you will provide for them even more at this hour. Away every day. Members of the family here back home in Ghana, whatever they have lost, I pray the Lord, you will replenish them in multiple folds. I pray the Lord, henceforth, you will draw this family nearer to you. The Lord, they will remember that one day they will also have an appointment with you. And we will prepare ourselves. As we are going to appointment, we remember to take our insurance cards. We will remember that when we are going to meet you, we will be prepared. Father, all of us gathered here, I pray the Lord, we we'll remember this day. We all have the ability to say that we are glad for your word declares that Lord, it is so precious for a righteous to die. Father, we thank you that we all walk in righteousness. Thank you and I commit the family into your hands one more time. As you have said that if we acknowledge you, you will direct our path. Father, direct the path of this family, especially our sister Juliana. Lord, you will guide their steps. Henceforth, they will never walk alone and they will know that you are with them. Thank you and I bless you. Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Steve and Pastor Vasco. I've been hit by the same one. The question that I keep asking myself when I was standing there 
will I make it? Will I make it to heaven? We come to burial services day in and day out. But the moment we exit here, it's a different story. Lord, have mercy on all of us. Aso, Kofi, and the entire family. The Lord who will become it will surely accomplish it for all of you. It is not by our strength, but by the power of the Lord. Oh, yes, son. Oh, yes, son. No, cross the oh, you could see. Now, I'm so. You will just see when you're going to see. Please, if you have not yet, and <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
from here we pray that your presence will continue to accompany us spirit of god brood over each and every person gathered here this morning we pray that you guide us through the next steps of this celebration of life as we go to the cemetery as we sit down tonight we pray that there will be no incidents there will be no accidents any situation that will cause us to even regret that this day happened we thank you we bless you you've been here with us and we know that you'll be here with us even as we continue on throughout the day we are grateful to you, Lord God Almighty. Even as we weep, we also say thank you. For in all things your word says, we should give you thanks. All thanks and glory belongs to you. The omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the all-knowing God, the all-seeing God. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
know. Yeah, no, I'm trying to get Amen. We will ask uh, Pastor Vasco again to do the honors and say an opening prayer, and then we proceed. Let us pray. Gracious Father and everlasting God, we thank you and we bless you for yet another opportunity. Father, we thank you for bringing us here safely. We commit the rest of the program into your mighty hands. The Bible says that you are beginning and the end. Therefore, we cannot proceed without your presence. We pray that, Lord, you take absolute control over everything that is about to happen here. That at the end, your name will be lifted up. Thank you, Father. Jesus, mighty name, have I prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. Minister Ransford will lead us to sing a hymn again. So guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Praise, songs of praise. 
praises I will ever keep to Thee. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then for my flesh I shall see God. Job 19, 25 and 26. None of us lives to himself. None of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Romans 14, 7 to 8. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, you have destroyed death. Keep our brother, our friend, Yao Kisi, whose body we now lay to rest in the company of all your saints. And at the last, raise him up to share with all your redeemed people the endless joy and peace one through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Make them glorious like his own body. Amen. 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 We will now do the comedo. Since the Almighty God has called our brother Yaukisi from life to himself, we commit his body to the earth from which it was made. Mm -hmm. Dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. Earth to earth. Christ was the first to rise from the dead. And we know that he will raise up our mortal bodies to be like his own glorious body. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we now commend Yaukisi. Acknowledge him as a sheep of your own fold, a lamp of your own flock, a sinner of your redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of eternal peace, and into the glorious company of the saints above. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They will rest from their labors, for their deeds will follow them. Let us pray. Merciful God, the Lord, and the Father of our Christ, who in the resurrection of life raises up, we are the, you who give comfort in times of distress and pain. Grant to the bereaved family consolation and faith. May your peace be felt where family discord threatens. Let your love continue to guide us that we may love and strengthen one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, will make each one of us perfect in every good work, as he will in the life of our brother Yaukisi. May he work in us that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will it be possible now to lower the casket? That you would like to put in, then please, um, you may do so.
anyone would like to put a wreath in now, please do so. God bless. Indeed, life is a series of welcomes and goodbyes. But this is no goodbye. This is till we meet again. And it won't be long on those celestial shores we will see our brother again. Our brother, our husband, our father, Yaukisi, may the Lord preserve him unto the grace and the day of the great reunion in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless every one of us. We commit family and friends again into the hands of the Lord. May his protection and his keeping be with every one of you, even now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Officially, we have come to the end of this particular part of our celebration of the life of our brother Yaukisi. I want to encourage you that this evening, at 8 p.m. 91 Stafford Street in Worcester, 6 p.m., sorry. Please be there and join us as we say a fitting farewell to him. And tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., 25 High Street, Worcester, at Faith Fellowship, we will hold a service in his honor. Amen. God richly bless you. Thank you for coming. Have a beautiful day and see you once more.